Are you a professional pillow fighter or a nine to five low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work-related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. On today's Smart 7, a second wave of explosions in Lebanon. John Major speaks out on Brexit and much more. It's Thursday, 19th of September. It's Talk Like a Pirate Day. And happy birthday, Jeremy Irons. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. There was a second wave of explosions across Lebanon on Wednesday as walkie-talkies and electronic devices appeared to be remotely detonated in the same way that pages were targeted on Tuesday. The larger explosions saw 20 people killed and more than 450 injured as once again it seemed Israel was targeting Hezbollah operatives and their communication networks. The first wave of attacks stunned military experts and caused outcry including from the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres who called the explosions deeply alarming. Israel hasn't claimed responsibility for the attacks, but US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken speaking in Cairo was keen to emphasize that the US was not part of the plan. The United States uh, did not know about, uh, nor was it involved in, these uh, incidents. We've been very clear about the importance of avoiding any steps that could further escalate the conflict that we're trying to resolve. There now seems to be little likelihood of any ceasefire succeeding, with a Hezbollah spokesperson warning that consequences will follow. The Israeli aggression won't pass without punishment. And if the Israelis think that this aggression will stop us from defending Gaza, they are living in illusion. There was mixed news for the economy on Wednesday. Firstly, the new government continued its mission to tidy up the mess left by the Tories as it wrapped up another of the long-running industrial disputes that have slowed economic growth. This time it was the train drivers with 97% of the Aslif union members voting to accept the offer of an almost 15% pay rise over the next three years. Mick Whelan from Aslef was sounding delighted that he could finally pack up his placard. We're grateful to the Labour Party being grown up to the union room and coming and talk to us about a realistic solution. We look forward now that delivering a railway under nationalisation for the taxpayer, the travelling public and a brighter, greener future for all people. In the US, the Federal Reserve moved to cut interest rates by a full half percent as the US economy has gotten to grips with inflation. But the news wasn't as good in the UK. The latest figures show that UK inflation has remained stuck at 2.2 percent, which means the Bank of England will be slow to follow on rate cuts. Household finance expert Greg Marsh told Sky News that the stubborn inflation means more pain for mortgage holders. We're desperate to see inflation come back down to the levels we all got used to. And if these inflation numbers don't start to improve, we're not going to see the kind of return to normal that the economy is hoping for. The Tory leadership contest is still slowly grinding on, with four candidates still in the running. Kemi Badenoch, Tom Tugendat, James Cleverley and Robert Jenrick are all due to make their case to the Tory conference in Birmingham at the end of September. With Keir Starmer and the new Labour government making concerted efforts to build new relationships with our European neighbours, the question of Brexit is looming over the contest. There was a surprise intervention on Brexit on Wednesday from a senior Tory, the former Prime Minister John Major. He sat down for an interview with the BBC's Amol Rajan and was strongly critical of the whole idea, describing it as damaging to both the Tory party and the UK itself. Brexit was sold to the nation on the basis of things that haven't happened and couldn't have happened. There was a great degree of misapplication of reality, if I can put it in that delicate way. Scotland saw a landmark day on Wednesday as it marked 10 years since the nation voted no in the independence referendum. The result saw 55% of Scots vote against the proposal, but the SNP have never given up on the idea of achieving proper independence for Scotland. Despite various attempts, there hasn't been a further vote, but former leader Nicola Sturgeon still hopes that there will be a wider shake-up of UK politics that could see Scotland become independent. And new First Minister John Swinney hasn't given up on the idea either, despite making it part of the SNP manifesto and losing a significant number of seats. People want honesty and clarity in politics. They want people to set out what they believe in. And I I believe in Scottish independence. I've believed in it all my adult life. Still to come.
come on today's Smart 7. Celtic get off to a flying start in the Champions League and Australia gets its own office right after this. To make switching to the new Boost Mobile risk-free, we're offering a 30-day money-back guarantee. So why wouldn't you switch from Verizon or T-Mobile? Because you have nothing to lose. Boost Mobile is offering a 30-day money-back guarantee. No, I asked why wouldn't you switch from Verizon or T-Mobile. Oh. Wouldn't. Uh, because you love wasting money as a way to punish yourself because your mother never showed you enough love as a child? Whoa. Easy there. Yeah. Applies to online activations. Requires port in and auto pay. Customers activating in stores may be charged non-refundable activation fees. Welcome back. Wednesday night saw more third round Carabao Cup action and the second night of the new expanded Champions League format. The Carabao Cup saw Brighton beat Wolves 3-2 while Spurs travelled to Coventry and needed two late goals to win the game. In the Champions League, Man City drew nil all with Inter Milan, but Pep seemed pleased with the result, while Celtic hosted the Slovakian side, Slovan Bratislava, and won comfortably 5-1. Celtic manager Brendan Rodgers was positively purring after the game. We were strong in the first half, uh, and then we just reiterated a couple of things at half-time, and then really second half, well, just the, the, the greed of the players, the, the hunger, the pressing, the counter-pressing... Just the mentality of the team, I was, I was so proud and obviously then the quality of the goals was, uh, was sensational. Halle Berry is the only black woman ever to have won an Oscar and she told Variety recently that she's still really annoyed about that. She described herself as eternally miffed by it, but she's excited about her new movie, which is a psychological thriller called Never Let Go. She plays a mother who goes to great lengths to protect her kids from evil and a lot of the action was filmed on location in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. She told the Today Show that she's delighted to be back on the big screen and in a happy relationship in real life. Before Van came into my life, I took four years and I was alone, completely, completely alone. And I worked on myself. I really had to take time to do that. And I got to the point where someone told me once, it will only find you when you really no longer covet it. The Office first hit our screens way back in 2001 when Ricky Gervais introduced us all to David Brent. There were only 14 episodes of the UK version in total, but the format went on to become a worldwide hit, particularly the US version, which starred Steve Carell and had over 200 episodes. There have been versions made in Germany, Poland, Chile, Canada, and there's even one in Saudi Arabia. And now, Australia have joined the chat as the first trailer drops for the Aussie version, where the action takes place in packaging company Flinley Craddock with girl boss Hannah Howard. It hits Prime Video on October 18th. The perks of coming to work. Riling up Lizzie. Flirting. Watching Nick rile up Lizzie. What's his name? My crow's name is Russell. Hello, Rusty. How are you, mate? Nick, no. <laughs> You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes and we'll give you the world. Taking care of kids, senior loved ones, and yourself can already be stressful, and adding new fall routines into the mix can make it feel impossible. Remember, it's okay to ask for help. There's a reason why 29 million families have turned to Care.com. Care.com helps you find background-checked sitters, nannies, and senior caregivers who can help with everything from watching kids after school to senior meal prep. Find care that fits your budget and schedule with Care.com and get the help you need.